If I was a truly evil person, I would somehow find a way to trick all of my arachnophobe friends into watching this movie. Maybe just thinking about that makes me evil. Anyways, if you are scared of eight-legged freaks, this is your chance to exit this review now. Okay, are we good? Let's talk about my immediate thoughts on Sting. Sting, which is not a biopic of the iconic lead singer from The Police or equally as iconic professional wrestler, which either of those would have been awesome, instead follows Charlotte, a rebellious 12-year-old girl who finds a tiny spider in her rundown apartment building. She keeps it in a jar, but soon it starts to grow at a monstrous rate and develop an insatiable appetite for blood. As her neighbors begin to disappear, Charlotte and her family find themselves in a desperate fight for their lives against a ravenous arachnid with a taste for human flesh. So when I left the theater after watching this movie, I'm going to be honest with you. I initially really didn't know how to feel about it. There were parts of this film that I feel were done really effectively, and then there are other parts that just aren't great. But let's talk about the performances first. Ayla Brown, who plays Charlotte, and that name should have clued me into what kind of movie we were getting ourselves into, plays this rebellious, rambunctious 12-year-old girl who crawls through all the air ducts in this rundown apartment like Newt in Aliens. And yeah, let's get this out of the way. This movie borrows heavily from a lot of other movies. Aliens. Aliens, Little Shop of Horrors, The Shining, The Terminator, The Thing. This is one of those movies where audiences are going to point at the screen and be like, oh, that's a shot or segment from insert movie here. I am not quite sure if Kia Roche Turner, the writer director of this film, are playing these influences sort of tongue in cheek or if it's lazy storytelling, but there are times where those influences works and then there are times where it just doesn't. This gets me to circle back to Ayla Brown, who at times I did believe did a very good job with what she was given, but there are things in terms of the writing and directing, in terms of Charlotte's character, she's just a little too clever for my taste and a little too rambunctious and too rebellious. And that makes it hard to root for her at times, but there is an arc with Charlotte's character as someone who is still getting used to this new family dynamic with her stepfather and new younger brother into someone who has to protect them at all costs. But she is the catalyst that starts everything and she discovers Sting in her aunt's dollhouse and she instantly bonds with the arachnid because she has no friends and really because the script calls it for her not to have any friends and she names the spider Sting after the sword in Lord of the Rings which I am still trying to understand the significance of that because Sting as a sword was still created on Earth. It wasn't an alien thing and it didn't turn itself on its main protagonists and its heroes. Really the only thing I can think of is that Sting and Lord of the Rings were done by the same special effects company. But one of the ideas that I do like from this film is the relationship between Charlotte and her father, played by Ryan Kaur. By day, he's trying to maintain this dilapidated apartment, but he is a budding graphic artist, and he and Charlotte are collaborating on a story that has ties to Charlotte's real father and this idealized image she has of her real dad and of family in general. And one of the things I did like about this is you can definitely see Ryan Core trying to play up the guilt and the burden of trying to be someone's idealized image 
of something that may or may not exist in just a little girl's head. That is played off really well. And honestly, in a better movie or a better well-written movie, this would have been explored a lot deeper and there would have been a lot more to be said about the relationship between Charlotte and her father in this film. But then the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this is sort of the same plot from Night Swim. We have a young family where we have a father who is obsessive and he gets either infected or possessed and he begins to slowly unravel. But I'll be honest with you, I did like Ryan Core here a little bit better than Wyatt Russell and Night Swim. And again, I think that's because of the connection that he shares with Ayla Brown in this film. Penelope Mitchell is in here playing Charlotte's mother and she's good. She's here. Yeah. Another one of the things that Sting did that I really appreciated was how it set up its environment. So Sting came from an asteroid in space that came really, really close to impacting Earth. But because of its, its close proximity, it brought an ice storm to Brooklyn. And because of that, no one can really get out of the apartment building. And you get a real sense of dread and the claustrophobic nature in this movie that no one can really escape this man-eating alien spider. And yeah, let's talk about Sting. I really dug the creature design for this monster. It was designed by Weta, the same team that did the special effects for Lord of the Rings. And it is an amazing creature design, uh, practical effect, puppet, animatronic that took like six people to control, but it is really fucking amazing and really scary. And you could definitely see the nods and ties to the Xenomorph from the Alien franchise. But if you are arachnophobic, you will get the creeps from this alien alien design and you will be running to the hills Iron Maiden. So yeah, Sting begins to grow exponentially in size and Charlotte takes him to her weird next door neighbor played by Danny Kim who is really weird because the script called for it and then he makes the decision that no sane person would ever make except for the fact that the script called for it. And that is definitely the most frustrating aspect of this film. It definitely feels like Kia Roche Turner, the writer-director, is trying very hard to create a modernized B-movie, 1950s, 1960s creature feature, but it is held back by a screenplay that has paper-thin characters that make a lot of dumb decisions, and it does draw so many comparisons to other better movies, and it is really hard not to see those better movies in this film. Also, Jermaine Fowler, who was just in Ricky Snicky, is in this, and he's pretty funny, and the film does something with him that is a little clever. It is actually based out of a movie trope that I am really starting to hate, but this movie pulled this trope off really effectively, so kudos to them for that. Overall, Sting was a modernization of the B-Monster movies that wanted to be great, and the ambition was there. But a screenplay that wrote some paper-thin characters and spent too much time admiring its own influences held it back from being a truly elevated film. But you can see the effort from all behind the scenes, and I did like the story between stepfather and stepdaughter, and in a better movie, this would have been explored really effectively. But the movie was entertaining enough, and the only thing holding it back is that I'll probably forget it in a week. Sting is a hit, but a really low one. So I've watched this movie, so anyone that's an arachnophobe doesn't have to. I'm doing the Lord's work here. Or is it my work? How does this work? Oh, I've tangled myself up in a web of my own ego. What did you think of Sting? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.